Hey everybody, this is Tony Mormino with Insight Partners. And in this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Hotgas Bypass versus Digital Scroll Compressors. And before we get into that discussion, it's kind of important to have a refresher on the refrigeration cycle, because if you don't grasp the components of the refrigeration cycle, it's really hard to understand what's going on with Hotgas Bypass in the Digital Scroll. So this is our typical refrigeration cycle. Every refrigeration cycle has basically four components, okay? The compressor, the condenser, the thermal expansion device, or TXV, and the evaporator. And what happens is, so the, the refrigerant comes into the compressor as a low pressure um, gas, and it gets compressed and heated to a high pressure high temperature gas. That gas is then sent to the condenser, which rejects its heat to the relatively cool atmosphere. So if it's 90 degrees outside, the refrigerant's 140, the heat leaves the refrigerant, turns it into a liquid and condenses the, the gas into a liquid. Then the, so the liquid comes around here on this drying to component number three, which is a thermal expansion device, which is basically a pressure drop device, it's a valve. It drops the pressure such that the liquid is now able to absorb heat from the air blowing across the coil. And as a matter of fact, it actually boils and changes the state um, in the evaporator if everything's working right. And that's what the whole purpose of the refrigeration cycle is to have that change of state, because you really absorb a lot of heat when that's happened. So let's look at kind of what happens, why we would use hot gas bypass. So if you have your air here, your mixed air, let's say it's 8067, which is a typical mixed air temperature, blowing across your cold evaporator coil, let's say the coil's at 45 degrees, it's going to cool the air to about 50 to 55 degrees. Okay. So what happens as this load drops is your suction temperature or the temperature of the refrigerant in here starts to drop, okay? And at some point you have to make a decision whether or not you wanna turn the compressor off or keep the compressor running. Now, why would you turn the compressor off when the load drops? Well, you might be dehumidifying. You might wanna remove humidity from the air, okay? So if this air was once 80 degrees and now it's 70 degrees or 65 degrees and you want to keep the compressor running you have to do something to prevent the coil from freezing up and if you just run this compressor all the time independent of what's going on in this load like let's say it was really cold outside and you ran this compressor you get something like this so this is an extreme example of a compressor covered in ice and the evaporator which have frozen up because they ran way below their suction temperature set point. Okay, so what do we do to prevent this from happening? We wanna keep the compressor running to dehumidify. Well, historically, we would use something called hot gas bypass, okay? So if you look at this drawing, it has the four basic components we looked at before, the compressor, refrigerant going to the condenser, coming out of the condenser going into the thermal expansion device, leaving there, going into the evaporator, and coming back around and starting it all over again. Oops, get back here. What we do with hot gas bypass is we take the hot gas that is discharging from the compressor that we would normally send to the condenser, and we divert it through a hot gas bypass valve and inject the hot gas into the inlet of the evaporator. So what we're doing is we're falsely loading the system and that'll prevent it from freezing and raise the suction temperature and suction pressure. So gas comes out of the compressor, it would normally go to the condenser, you divert it to the inlet of the evaporator. Okay, this is one type of hot gas bypass, there's a couple different types. What happens here is this is just a valve, and you can see there's a little tube here that gets connected to the suction temperature, suction tube of the compressor. So as this pressure starts to drop, this valve opens and sends more of the gas into the evaporator, thus preventing the freezing. So it's a 
So Hotcast Bypass is a freeze prevention device that allows you to keep the system running all the time. It doesn't really control anything. It's not a controlling device. It doesn't modulate the compressor. Um, it's very, you know, before maybe 10 years ago, this is really was the most popular way to keep your compressor running. We didn't have ways efficiently to modulate the compressor. So um, it uses a lot of energy and it's not a real good, you know, it's not real healthy for the system. Okay. It causes a lot of wear and tear. So today we're able to modulate the compressor rather than falsely load the system. So what we do, uh, and I, now is I'm going to talk a little bit about the digital scroll compressor. Okay, so the scroll, this is a, let's talk a little bit about a scroll compressor, just a typical on-off scroll compressor. So if we look here, this is what a typical scroll looks like. The major, vast majority of AC systems have scroll compressors. So if you were to look like inside of this thing, you'd see a motor down here. This is your power connection. This is the suction from the evaporator. It goes through the compressor, gets compressed, heat it up to higher pressure, higher temperature, and leaves out the top, off to your condenser, okay? And the way this works, if you were to take this seam and unweld it, take the top off and look down in the compressor, this is what you would see. So as you can see, these chambers are ever decreasing in volume, which is what squeezes or compresses the, the gas and increases the temperature. So it comes in here, and these colors are to denote, you know, it getting warmer and higher in pressure. So that's kind of how a scroll compressor works, okay? So let's look at what a digital compressor does. So a digital compressor, otherwise known as a variable capacity compressor, some people call it a modulating scroll compressor, and some people just use the term VCC, which is very common in the industry. So what happens is if you were to take, cut away here, look inside the compressor, you can see this top plate moves up. And it goes down, moves up, and then it goes down. So this is how we modulate the compression of the gas. So we take 15 second increments, and if you only need half of the capacity, you put the scroll up for half of it and down for half of it. So while the scroll is disengaged or up, no compression is happening. While it's down, it's operating just like a standard scroll compressor would operate. The motor is constant speed. It doesn't change its speed. It's always the same. So that's a digital compressor. So it lifts the top plate to remove the compression, lowers the top plate. So the advantages of this are you get very precise control. So now we can really dial in our suction temperature, our coil temperature, it, it, almost exactly. And thus we can control the leaving air temperature of the unit. So it's really, really nice. Um, it's extremely efficient, so it uses a lot less energy than hot gas bypass. It's very effective with oil return because oil return is highly dependent on the velocity of the gas in the system. So as this is pumping, it's always full load velocity on your gas and your oil. Plus you get ample reheat at low, low conditions. That has to do with dehumidification, which is a little more advanced. One of the things to watch out for in the digital compressor is it does make a little bit of noise as the scroll plates engage and disengage. If it's taken into account ahead of time, it's usually not a big deal, but just know that it does have some acoustical characteristics to it that need to be noted in design. So we hope you enjoyed this video. I have just started a new website called HVACwebinars.com. I hope you'll come and join it. At this website, you can sign up for all of my future webinars. You can schedule personal private lunch and learns for you and or your company. And you can see all my training videos in one spot, HVACwebinars.com. So thanks for watching. Hope you'll come check it out. Thank you.